Hello, my name is James Greenland, 1800 745, and this video will be contributing to my internship module NS5001. During this internship, I have been working at Huxley's Bird of Prey Centre in Horsham, West Sussex. Huxley's is a small family and volunteer run business in the private sector and displays a beautiful garden and over 80 birds of prey. These species range from harris hawks to caracaras, vultures to eagles, and also includes a huge variety of falcons. In addition to displaying these birds to the public, Huxley's also occasionally engages in wildlife rehabilitation, helping birds of prey that may be sick or injured before returning them back to the wild. Fortunately, during my time at the centre, no wild birds of prey were in need of rehabilitation. This centre has been operating at its current location since 1993. So the general aims I set myself during this internship were to improve my skills while working with animals, but also with people, as well as my ability to be dependable and responsible while undertaking tasks assigned to me. And this is mainly due to my lack of past employment such as within the hospitality industry. In addition to this, learning about aspects of birds of prey, such as their morphological characteristics, behaviours and manners of flying, were key aims of mine. Because my employment record is relatively sparse, I was also interested to see and acknowledge how the industry of avian husbandry, in this case specifically birds of prey, was operated helping me to develop transferable skills for other potentially similar occupations. In order to complete these aims, I wanted to be punctual, so I made sure that I was organised and would turn up on time if not earlier to my shift. I also listened carefully when being told information by staff about the birds and operations of the centre. I asked questions if unsure or simply curious about something. It was also important for me to surround myself with new people, both staff and the public, and engage in conversation. So, why did I decide to apply and complete the internship at Huxley's Bird of Prey Centre? Well, one of the key reasons was due to my strong interest in birds of prey. Simply put, I'm fascinated by their appearance, whether it's while sitting, walking, or while flying, the way each species has a slightly different method of hunting, their personalities and their behaviour. This placement was also able to offer me professional experience working with animals, and this would supply me with a sturdy foundation in animal management and husbandry for the future. Huxies could also provide me with the opportunity to develop my skills in wildlife filmmaking and narration, with this carrying great importance due to my intention of going into wildlife filmmaking after university. Huxley's is made of a rather small, close-knit team, which meant I was able to get to know everyone quite well. This was rather essential if I was going to complete my aim of improving my people skills. These skills were also exercised by being able to work alongside the public, in this case working with customers. So where did I fit into the way that Huxley's actually operates? So, while being an intern at Huxley's Bird of Prey Centre, my position was close to that of a volunteer. With preliminary guidance and instruction, I was able to complete a variety of jobs such as cleaning, gardening and helping to fly the birds, all of which will be shown in this video. All volunteers at the centre undertake similar as well as the same jobs, such as those just mentioned, and I was able to assist this workforce and provide an extra set of hands to reduce the overall workload. Throughout this video, I will display the duties that I undertook on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as some features of the centre that I found especially interesting, such as modern Bird of Prey GPS. Also, despite assessing each activity for its general success in this video, I'd like to say that there wasn't anything that I didn't find really enjoyable, and that I didn't see as successful, because in general I found the whole experience very rewarding. However, there were of course aspects that were potentially more physically challenging than others, such as aviary and site maintenance in comparison to activities such as flying the birds, but I really didn't see these activities as any sort of hindrance to the general success of the internship. 
If anything, these activities were the ones where I learnt the most about the essential jobs that need doing in order to sufficiently operate a bird of prey centre. The skills learnt and developed while doing these tasks will be those that are potentially most beneficial and transferable. I will now run through some of the activities and tasks that I was assigned while being an intern. It's no surprise that the maintenance of a bird of prey centre involves lots of cleaning and making sure that the birds are comfortable in their aviaries. This part of the video will involve a description of what equipment is actually used in order to efficiently clean the aviaries and the traditional mews and how they are used. So this is a typical trowel and it's used to pick up the feathers, pellets and faecal matter that's generally situated beneath and around the perch unless it's a harris hawk or an eagle, because let's just say these species tend to be a bit more explosive. Sand is laid and provides the foundation for the aviaries, but it's important when using the trowel to pick up as little as this is possible to avoid having to replace it, which is obviously costly in the long term. This is why a sieve is used. The waste is put into the sieve and shaken from side to side to allow it to separate from the sand. The rake is then used to neatly level out the sand again after it was disturbed by the trout. The waste that was collected is then emptied out of the sieve into a bucket and disposed of. Block tops are the rubber or artificial brass surfaces that the birds sit on while in their aviary and are cleaned near enough daily. They are first removed from the perches and left to soak for about an hour or two in a large bucket of water. The tops are then scrubbed with a coarse brush like this before being left to drip dry, either along the path or in a bucket. Block tops differ in size and material to meet the needs of the bird. For example, a geosaker falcon has a slightly larger block top in comparison to a European kestrel. Once the block tops have all been reapplied to their designated positions, the ground is raked to end the cleaning process with a neat and tidy finish. So this section of the video is going to be a walk through the equipment used on a day to day basis in falconry and what it's used for. This is the glove or a gauntlet and is made out of thick leather and has a metal loop on the side for tethering the bird when transporting it. The leather is typically buckskin or deer skin which is used because it's slightly more supple and soft compared to other leathers. This means that the falconer is able to feel the bird and it has more of a responsive feel to it. This is a block perch and is an example of what the bird may sit on when in an aviary. Artificial grass often serves as the surface for the health of the bird's feet, but this doesn't last as long as a rubber block top does. This is the main frame of the block perch and has a tethering ring situated at the base to secure the bird and this can be loosened and tightened with the leash. The stand is generally metal and typically buried under the foundation of the aviary until sturdy. This is called the swivel and is an important part of falconry equipment because it prevents the leash from tangling. It is attached to the leash which is 4 foot long and typically made out of either nylon or leather. It is used to secure the bird and provides enough space when it's tethered for washing and drinking. Leather jessies are tied to the swivel which are in turn secured to the anklet which the bird wears. Now we will see how these items in falconry equipment are made. Anklets are made out of kangaroo leather due to its trade to being somewhat stretchy in one direction yet rigid in the other. The anklets are cut into a rounded rectangle shape before being marked as to where the two holes are to be punched out. This is where the eyelet will go through. These are the kind of situations where I appreciated sitting and listening to how aspects of falconry are operated because I felt that these skills could be adopted and used in the future. Cutting the sides of the anklets provides give for the bird and helps prevent the anklet from digging into the bird's feet. Cocho lime wax is applied which helps preserve, soften and revive the leather. Jessies are made in a similar way, also using kangaroo leather. The jessies are cut into strips and are given a pointed tip. This is so one end of the jessies can be threaded through the hole at the other end when attaching these to the eyelet in the anklets. The jessies are an incredibly important part of falconry equipment because these allow the falconer to hold onto and be in control of the bird when it's on the glove. Cocho Lime Wax makes a second appearance here to also soften and preserve the leather. 
extending the lifespan of the jessies. One of the first and no doubt the most important task I was set while an intern was to master the falconer's knot. This knot is used in all circumstances when the bird is tethered to something, whether that be the crayons, perch or glove. The falconer's knot is very effective at resisting pulling, yet relatively easy to undo with one hand. This is important as the other hand in most cases will be holding a bird of prey. This is another skill I was taught by staff during my time at Huxley's Bird of Prey Centre, yet this is the one that is most vital to underpin due to the consequences if this knot were to become loose or unfastened. This is Sorrel. He's a 21 year old tawny owl. In the wild, tawny owls usually live about 3 to 5 years. And they feed off frogs and beetles and rodents and sometimes other birds such as barn owls. They nest in holes in trees and sometimes buildings and that's where they'll have their eggs. They usually have about two to five eggs. They've got this amazing satellite like facial plumage which reflects all of the sound in there is. And this is actually the most common species of owl in, in Britain. My time spent both observing and helping to fly the birds was the most enjoyable aspect of the internship. I was interested to see the different aspects of training that a bird might experience. One of the first stages of training is simply flying the bird from the stationary post to the glove, with the incentive being a piece if not a whole chick leg depending on the size of the bird. Distance between the post and the glove can then be increased before potentially using different types of lures for different bird species. Species of falcons, such as the peregrine or a geoseca falcon, can be seen acrobatically dive bombing a swing lure that's operated by the falconer before it eventually catches it mid-air. Throughout this internship, in addition to afterwards, I have tried to strongly resonate with Kolb's learning cycle as well as SWOT analysis. I started with concrete experience to recognise and create distinctions between my strengths and weaknesses in addition to where this internship would bring about potential opportunities. My positive attributes seem to lie within the different aspects of attitude, being very positive in addition to displaying a good work ethic. However, in the recent past, speed to accomplish task was a potential weakness of mine, with this being due to focusing more on the quality of the work rather than the quantity. However, during this internship, I felt I was able to find a happy balance with this, for example with Avery cleaning and maintenance. It was important for me to review this experience in my own time, which has enabled me to configure viewpoints relating to how I potentially developed in the fields that I planned, but also in areas that I didn't. Being around people has definitely had a positive impact on my team working skills, as well as my ability to work with customers, which was of course a key aim of mine. However, I wasn't expecting the sheer amount of knowledge I learned about birds of prey. I feel as if now I have a thorough understanding of most aspects of falconry. This supports the idea that internships and work experience take a different approach to traditional information transfer, by exposing the person to a method of learning through doing in addition to listening. Acting upon newly gained knowledge I felt was an extremely beneficial method of firmly establishing information in my head, and the skills learnt were more beneficial for future careers I may have. Internships provide great opportunities, such as to network and create links with people that regular class-based learning potentially wouldn't. Due to me undertaking this internship during the Christmas holidays, luckily I was not affected by COVID-19. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on my experience while doing an internship at Huxley's Bird of Prey Centre.